Greetings, people of the internet. Welcome to the underground laboratory where usually we create what? Robots, alien zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. But we're not going to do that this time, no, because we want to get into the holiday spirit. And so I've been doing a little sprucing up here around in the underground laboratory. And down here, miles below the surface of the earth, we don't get too many visits from old St. Nick. So we do what we can. But one thing we can do is we can use technology that we develop right here at CircWorks Laboratories. Specifically the parallelescope, which you've probably seen before, but what does it do? You know what it does, and if you don't, what it does is it allows us to visit parallel universes, alternate timelines, where I can go see a version of myself who isn't stuck down here in a lab, working away day and night, who can actually do things with his family, getting ready for Christmas and all those type of things, and you never know what to expect. I could be... I could be decorating my house, I could be working on artwork that pertains to Christmas, Christmas cards maybe? Hmm, let's see. Let's see what happens when we visit the parallel me in an alternate timeline through the magic and the merriment that is the parallelescope. Let's go to it. Hey, so I'm out here in my garage about to break open some uh, Christmas decorations and start putting that stuff up. So let's see what we have. All right, here's some Calvin and Hobbes cutouts that I created, oh geez, a bunch of years ago. But they're still, they're holding up. I keep wanting to add to them, but I haven't, I haven't done one, another, a new one since I originally started. But got all these snowmen. There's uh, some more stuff there. So I'm going to start... Uh, putting these things up and then I gotta get the lights out and everything so here we go all right so just trying to get the last bit of Christmas lights here I am up on my roof and it seems like every single year I do this it gets a little scarier the older I get um, I never used to be afraid of heights but it's starting to get to me so just trying to be careful up here but uh, yeah so there's kind of the view it's a little ways down there so here's a shot of the exterior of the house with the lights all up and you can see it gets pretty high up there. I think I'm probably the only one with this, this same floor plan, this same style house in the neighborhood that actually puts it on that top part of the house. So maybe I'm just crazy, but, <laughs> but I don't know, it turned out pretty well. Uh, you can see right up here, I've got my little Calvin up there and yeah. Okay, so got all the exterior lights in the house all up, all the outside decorations done. The inside, pretty much in the circle and household, is complete as well. And, uh, you know, we got together, the kids and I, we decorated the tree. It's tradition that we do that. Um, one other tradition that I do every year, since I'm an artist, what I like to do is I like to design my own Christmas cards. So I thought I would just take you back and show you some, some of my older cards that I've designed and then show you a little bit, uh, kind of give you a sneak preview of the card that I'm working on for this year. And like always, I'm a little bit behind. Um, it's usually, it usually comes out like the people start getting them like the week uh, before Christmas, but that's just the way it goes every single time. Um, and I'm always rushed, but I always get it out and I've done this for, oh geez, like 20, I think like 20 years now. Um, so I'm not going to go all the way back because some of it was back before, before I got divorced and stuff. So they got the X in them. So I'm not going to show you all of them, but I'll show you like about the past, I think eight years and everything. So, um, and I try to do different styles. I pick a different theme each time. Um, this, uh, this is the first one I'm going to show you. It's pretty traditional. Um, just sort of like a Santa's workshop. Got me and the kids and little, uh, you know, art stuff and, you know, I don't know, kind of fun. Uh, let's see what we got. This one is another one. This one I just kind of featured my kids um, on the words joy, kind of hanging out. Um, now the thing is, when, when you do these cards, when you design these cards like this, um, sometimes it's, uh, people are like, we want to see actual pictures of your kids. We love the illustrations, but we never get to see what they look like. But I don't know, I continue to do it this way. Now with social media and everything, people can usually see pictures of my kids and things like that. So it's not that big a deal if I send like cartoons, but people do look forward to them and that's kind of cool. And people always, every time it like, sometimes I'll go over to somebody's houses and they still got them on their fridge and stuff. So this one was a fun one. So I, this one, I don't know, I'll have to go back and then forward, but I just designed these little paper dolls of my kids and you can dress them up and like Santa outfits and everything like that. So that was a fun one. Uh, let's see. So this was back, I think, when Wreck-It Ralph came out. And if you guys remember the, what was it? Was, I wanted to say Candy Crush, but it's not Candy Crush. It's, uh, I forgot the name of the game. The, um, 
Sugar Rush Racers, something like that. Anyway, um, so this is us as the, I'm just going to call it Sugar Rush Racers, Racers. I think that's what it is. But each different character is kind of, if you've seen Wreck-It Ralph, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so that was fun. Kind of, we, we went with our own candy, our favorite candies. And uh, my daughter was like Neapolitans, those little old Brock candies, which I don't know if they make anymore. Uh, my son was mint. He likes mint. I've, I like licorice. I'm one of the few people out there that like licorice. And my son, I think it was a, I think he said it was a, a what do you call those? Tits, like a Tootsie Pop, the blueberry one. So, so we got that one. And uh, I'm a big fan of Rankin and Bass. So this was kind of my tribute to that kind of style. Um, Rankin and Bass got that kind of look to it. Um, so you can see that and let's see so this this year I decided to go not this year but one year I decided to do us as like pop vinyl figures so that was that was a fun one to do I actually want to take I want to try to find like a vinyl figure of like probably maybe my daughter because she collects them and uh, actually make the box and find one that sort of looks like her and paint it up and actually make a physical one for her but um, if I ever do that I've got all the artwork there uh, this was a couple years ago. Was it when uh, when uh, the Peanuts movie came out? So again, big fan of Charles Schultz. It kind of did it in that style. And then what do we got here? And this was last year. I just decided. Sometimes I, I I'm kind of trying to think of ideas and nothing comes. But so I'll go back to some classics. And and one. I say it's a classic Christmas movie now. It's it's a it's fairly new, um, but Elf. I'm a big fan of the movie Elf, so we just decided to do Elf theme and you know pouring the the syrup on the spaghetti and everything like that. That was kind of fun. So that brings us to this year. What am I going to work on? Well, um, it seems like this year was mostly taken up by politics and things like that, and I didn't want to get into that. Um, so I just again I wanted to sort of do something more fun, more traditional. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something. It seems like everyone's having these ugly sweater parties, so I thought it'd be fun. It would just more traditional us in these sweaters but have the sweaters kind of reflect our own kind of what we're into like for me I'm big into Star Wars and stuff like that so and art and all that kind of stuff so I would do that and then uh, pick each one of my kids and kind of pick what they're into and we'll do it like that so let's get let's get over to uh, the drawing board and see uh, how this process happens me working on uh, on this year's Christmas card so as you've seen with my previous cards, I usually keep everything fairly cartoony and this year is no exception, but I did want to do something a little different uh, and I like to vary the style a little bit. This, this time I'm not really building off of like an entertainment property or some kind of toy like, like I did with the pop vinyl thing or I'm not trying to match a style like that, like the peanuts or anything like that. So I was trying to figure out, well, what kind of style should I go with on this one? And then I realized I haven't really done anything the way I traditionally uh, or what I've been doing lately, like with my, you know, with the prints and things that you might see uh, on my website and my, all my, you know, postcards and all the stuff that I do on my website. It kind of follows this style that I'm using now, which starts off basically doing my sketch on like 11 by 17 copy paper, something real rough. You can see it in send red. I use a red color erase pencil. Get all my sketching, get all the, the characters kind of situated. And then once I get that sketch, then I'll scan that into the computer. Um, I'll bring it into Adobe Illustrator, create a layer, uh, then make it so that that layer is not writable with the scan. And then I'll just basically go over over my lines and tightly with, with the Illustrator tools, uh, with the pen tool, and go around and basically trace everything around. And it's kind of, I, I liken it to sort of a, a coloring book look. Uh, just very, if you've ever looked at, looked at how they illustrate coloring books, a lot of times it's very, you know, it's very tight. Uh, usually the out, outer border has has sort of a thicker line. You can kind of see the all the stuff inside the lines a little bit thinner. Not not they're not all like that. Not all coloring books, but uh, that's kind of where I started to get this idea. And so I'll go through. I'll just with the pen tool trace everything out, make all my shapes, basically trace the whole thing out. And then the next thing I do is go in and then I start to taper all the lines and make them kind of come to an angle, almost like you, like a really tight brush, you know, kind of how a brush tapers when you're, like when you're inking. Um, and then after that, 
uh, what I'll do is I'll go in and start start coloring in the illustration. Uh, it's basically almost like you would flat a comic book. Uh, you can do this a number of different ways. I use sometimes I'll just use like the paintbrush and fill things in. Sometimes if it's a larger area, I'll go to my original line art. I'll select that, and then I'll kind of adjust the selection to kind of expand it by a couple pixels, just so it gets beyond where that uh, where the line is. So there's no not like a little white gap. And then you got to remember to go back to your your because if you're selecting the lines, you don't want to fill that that selection because if you do that, then you're going to go over your lines. So you have to, rem uh, and that's the hardest part to remember because each time you make those selections, you got to go back to your layer underneath and then make sure that's the layer you fill. So large areas like that, like, you know, the t-shirts and, you know, and I start off with, you can see, I can kind of start off with the skin tones for everything. And that basically, that area is something I actually did with in Illustrator. Because right now, um, I, I probably forgot to tell you that, um, to do the coloring, I, I do bring it into Photoshop. So I, I transform everything into Photoshop and that's where I do my coloring. So my process is a little bit of everything. You know, I use traditional and then I'll use Illustrator and then I'll use Photoshop. And um, But I'm finding it's a lot easier with the Cintiq now, uh, especially coloring and painting. Um, I'm not so much, I haven't done a whole lot of drawing other than kind of the tracing and stuff that I'm that I'm tracing over my original, you know, my sketches and everything. I do. I've been doing everything. All the digital stuff is now with the Cintiq, but I'm finding that the the actual painting is is a lot easier. And this is just real basic stuff right here. Again, it's just like comic book flatting. Um, I'm trying to figure out, you know, what color schemes to use, and uh, and I'm gonna get a little fancy with some of the decorations on the shirts and everything. Uh, and try to make some cool patterns as you can see coming up but oh back to what I was talking about before was in Illustrator I'll just select the outline because if you look around the characters it's kind of a thicker outline um, I'll select that whole thing copy it and then turn that outline into a fill and put it on another layer and I'm, I made that fill the uh, Hope this is making sense it makes sense to me but it's kind of it's hard to explain but I made I made that fill the kind of that flesh tone and put it underneath and then so so I don't have to go in and, and color all that stuff and I can go in and select things like that um, now what I'm doing kind of adding highlights so as you can see kind of in the hair um, I'll use like a lighter color of everything and then I'll also go in and do my shadows with kind of a darker color and luckily my kids have you know, because because they are so cartoony, um, they could tend to look very similar because they're really basic. But luckily, my kids have very different hair. Uh, my younger son, his is curly, kind of like mine, and my my older son is kind of straight, and my daughter's is straight and obviously longer. <laughs> so so it shouldn't be that difficult. And the colors vary a little bit too. Uh, most of them are blonde, various shades of blonde. Um, but and. You can see almost like magic. <laughs> kind of skipped over a few things, but uh, what I did was I found a lot of the stuff was uh, the little icons and things on the uh, on the sweaters. Uh, a lot of that, if I could find like free clip art, um, I would just go get vector files and fill those in uh, and, and kind of drop those in. Um, and in some cases, I kind of had to like find like I think like this tri whatever is the, the triforce or whatever. I don't think I could find that one for free, so I think I had to like actually just copy like from a uh, JPEG or something and trace it in Illustrator. Again, this is just for my own benefit. You know, you don't obviously you don't want to. Well, in the age of fan art, I guess you can get away with doing it whatever you want. So, um, but anyway, so it's probably hard to see here, but so on my jack or my sweater, I've got some art supplies. I've got like the pen and ink and the star Wars. And then I've got a little robot alien and a zombie. Uh, my daughters, I've got uh, ballet and uh, let's see she, unicorns and Mickey mouse. And some of them are a little hard to see, but she likes to bake. So there's a pie and a donut there. Um, uh, my other son, these, the Minecraft fallout uh, Skyrim, I think. And then my other son is, I think, She's oh, Magic the Gathering and uh, Legend of Zelda and Pokemon and D and D and all that stuff. So, <laughs> so that's pretty much you know what they're into. So, um, but yeah, just kind of going through and kind of fixing all the things. What you see now is 
is the other th the other thing that I do that's kind of my style. If you look, there's sort of a white outline around, and that's something I like to throw in. It reminds me of the old stickers of the 80s, and I think it kind of helps helps pop the illustration out. Um, it's just something that I do that the uh, look that I like. Um, I think it kind of just kind of gives it this like paper cutout look that I really like. Um, so I do that, but then also I go through and all the, I, I do like uh, color fills on all the lines. So uh, instead of just having the regular black outlines, I'll go in and, and select those and just go in and color them a little darker than whatever the fill color is. And uh, so that's kind of that's kind of the process of how I create my Christmas cards. And hopefully that wasn't too hard to understand. Maybe you have questions, just let me know and I can answer them. Easy as that. But uh, yeah, that's how I do it. Okay, here I am at Costco getting ready to pick up my Christmas cards. Okay, I got the pictures. Let's take a look, see how they came out. I'm not too worried. Usually they do a pretty good job. So yeah. They look pretty good. Yeah. So I usually, I always want to like, I should have, what I what I really should have did, had this bleed all the way to the edge and then like back it to like a, a piece of like cardstock or something. And I always say I'm going to do that, but I always run out of time. I'm always working on these way last minute, but better just to get it out just so people get something. But uh, no, that's good. I think that I think most people send kind of these photographs. Um, I used to in the past would print them on my printer and do all that stuff, but um, just expediency. So anyway, be sending these out soon. All right, there you have it. So here is a closer look at the finished card. And so now all I have to do is stuff these in envelopes, address them, and send them out through the mail. And possibly, if I have your address, you may be getting one of these. If not, follow me on my Facebook page, and I'll post a, I'll post the image of it there, a little digital version of that. So happy holidays, Merry Christmas. I'll see you guys next week, and that is all. Oh, no, 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 no,